This was for fiberglass accessories. Over there was the mechanical side where we did uh, fairing brackets and all that sort of thing. And upstairs in the mill, we used to blow all the bubbles and paint all the bits for the P50s and Tridents. So I was in charge of the whole lot then. And Cyril uh, was still in charge now, but I kept an eye on all the staff. And then he would come to me and say one day, well, George, here, I want you to make this, you know. Now if we go on another project. Everybody got on with everybody else. It was good. Yeah, yeah. I don't suppose you appreciated it quite as much as the time as you did when you're thinking back on it. But yeah, it, it was it was a good it was a good thing. It was very very interesting. You you covered so much stuff. You you'd never do it anywhere else. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we had great fun. We it was mucky dirty. Boss the, the men around. Boss the men around. Yeah, we're in two yeah. in charge. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we thought we were. Cyril <laughs> <laughs> was one of these people who took an idea and developed it to a certain extent and then uh, once it was successful changed on to something else. He was a genius, there's no question about it like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I, I don't think he knew it all in his head but he, if he had an idea he would get the right books and the right information so he knew it, you know, and, and yeah, he, he wasn't scared to tackle things, you know. Well, there was nothing around apart from an old, a scooter. And the idea was to build something as an enclosed scooter. Something for somebody to go to work. That was some falls to work. Cheap to run. And in the dry. Whereas a scooter was cheap to run. But it was raining, you got wet. So the idea of the P50 was to keep everybody dry and go backwards and forwards to work. The only problem with it was that the engine was only 50 cc's. And unless you were a motorcyclist, you found it difficult to drive because it was only a tiny engine. So you had to rev it virtually as hard as it, it could go before you changed up to the next gear. Funny thing is, they took one to the motorcycle show and got people very interested, you know, in the P50. Uh, that had one wheel in the front and two at the back. And they were telling everybody that being tested down the TT course, uh, and we'd do a hundred miles to the gallon uh, and all this sort of thing. Well, it never had an engine in it. <laughs> so that was kind of con on the public. We decided that that wasn't very stable. So we changed it around, put two wheels in the front and one at the back. It's made a big difference. It, it got a lot of interest, you know. I don't think all the interest followed up with this sales, unfortunately, but there was a lot of, lot of interest, you know. You had a mould, um, two moulds actually, you had a mould for the bottom of the car, which was shaped, and then you had the top shape, and one sat on top of the other, and you riveted it together. Yeah, nothing to do with the fiberglass, we did. It. We did, yeah. Yeah. Start to finish, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Start to finish polish, polishing the mould before you oh, even started the to that do the, the fiberglassing in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were hard when you first started. Oh, yeah. I didn't like the door edges <laughs> the on door. the window. I hated that. <laughs> they were horrible. <laughs> the intricate bits. Because yeah. you weren't used to it, you see. You weren't used to it. And you had to get your fingers in. The, oh, all this stuff on your fingers. But you got, we you got, got used, used to, to that. that didn't we? we really got used yeah. to that. Yeah. And then your clothes were messy, weren't they? They're, oh, well, they used to have you. Jeans over our used to pull. Uh, jeans, yeah. you know what I mean. When you think back now, and we should we, have had overalls. We, and we didn't. No. We should have had an overall like a man, and, and we you didn't. Did, when you took them off before they, you went home, it'd stand up on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and we didn't wear face masks or end with none of that no. health and safety that there is today. No, no. I don't know how we didn't die of no all the fumes. Or the fumes the fumes of the fire the glass going. Couldn't wear gloves. Yeah. Could no, you? couldn't wear gloves, so no. that was a waste of time. We did have a bit of a, of a production on. It wasn't very long night. They were handmade, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would hammer it down the road here. Before I went out, I would make sure that the brakes were all even, etc. Um, and I would take it out from here, hammer it down the road, down as far as the castle, and back again. And if not, ha nothing happened at that time, it was fit to go. <laughs> so I had the nice job of, of testing everyone. This was good, actually. Never even got in one, no, did we? We weren't, weren't allowed in them. Years later. Yeah. We weren't allowed. We just we just made them. We just made them. We weren't allowed yeah. in. We were just the workers. P50 was produced for 199 pounds. Uh, one of the last ones sold in America was 140,000. I think. I mean, it's not, it's not unbelievably ridiculous. And Brenda said, "Why didn't you keep one?" He didn't think anything about keeping one. Just, he didn't imagine it was going to be worth anything more than what it was, you know. And I've met, I've met some of these guys that paid long thousands for them, you know. And I uh, can't, can't figure out why they did it. But they do, and there you go. I think at the, at the end of the day, it's a novelty that not many people have got. Men's toys. Now we now we can't. Uh, <laughs> nobody can afford them. <laughs> yes, men's, men's boys toys. toys boys, boys toys. Boys toys. That's what they are. Boys toys now. <laughs>